Hello everyone! Uh, since you enjoyed game number 15 so much, here is game number 16 uh, of the World Chess Championship match 1960 between Mikhail Tal and Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, here Botvinnik has the white pieces and again uh, Tal has to decide what to play. As you can see in the quote above the board, uh, after home thinking, Koblenz and I came to a rather bold decision to once again enter the Lions Den. Uh, which uh, which basically means that uh, once again Tal will go for the Nimzo Indian defense uh, and for the sharp knight, uh, early knight e4 variation uh, to, because he, he thinks that he definitely had some uh, chances there in the previous game he had the black pieces uh, in game uh, game 14 and that uh, here he will probably have the most chances to create something. So uh, let, let's see this game. Uh, again, uh, Tal is still two points in the lead and uh, still this is like I believe the fourth or maybe the fifth game that's drawn. So uh, very, <laughs> very, uh, you know, a, uh, feisty match and um, as the title of the video suggests, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a very crazy position. So l let's check it out. Uh, Botvinnik, like we said, has the white pieces and he plays d4. So knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. So the Nimzo Indian defense. Uh, we have a3, uh, bishop captures, pawn captures, like we had in game 14. Uh, knight to e4, so preventing this uh, idea of f3 and e4 due to queen, queen coming to h4. Uh, queen to c2, attacking the knight, and now f5. And Tal thought, uh, yeah, this is the exact same recommendation uh, Taimanov uh, recommends in his book, but he, he thinks that after f5, uh, black's game is uh, is simply, you know, uh, at least equal. Uh, and here, uh, Botvinnik plays knight to h3, but the problem about knight to h3 is that uh, Tal knew that Botvinnik would play this. Uh, but Botvinnik again spent over 15 minutes on this move, and Botvinnik knew that he would play this move, but this is something that Botvinnik always does, uh, which uh, kind of did tell uh, Tal that uh, Botvinnik didn't really uh, prepare anything extra uh, for this variation, uh, you know, uh, even though they already played it in game 14. Uh, because if he had, uh, he probably wouldn't spend 15 minutes here. So pro uh, Tal probably thought uh, that Botvinnik had the idea that maybe this was just uh, something Tal wanted to try once in game 14 and he will not use it again for the rest of the match. Uh, but he was wrong. So knight to h3, uh, d6, now comes f3, kicking the knight away, knight f6 and d4. And here uh, d4 was kind of a novelty, but not really, as uh, Tal, Tal does know of a game bishop to g5. Uh, it's a game played between Tolush and Lutikov, uh, where black uh, after bishop to g5 had a pretty nice game. After e5, e3 uh, and h6, bishop to h4 and queen to e7, uh, Tal really enjoyed uh, black's position uh, after this series of moves. Uh, so Botvinnik obviously knows of this as well, so after this uh, move uh, e4 is coming. Uh, here we have f captures on e4, f captures on e4, and e5. Uh, other than e5, Tal uh, says that uh, castling here is a possibility, and I mean, why wouldn't you castle? Uh, you get a nice open file for your rook, uh, the knight can the knight can come to g4, you can create some interesting ideas here, the queen can come into the game. Uh, the problem is, Tal says that uh, here white can go e5, uh, if you don't stop e5 by playing e5 yourself. Uh, d captures on e5, d captures on e5, and knight to g4 now. Uh, bishop to d3, uh, attacking the h7 pawn, and here uh, it, it, it was considered that this was a double-edged position. Here, uh, in today's uh, modern age of, of engines, uh, it, it's, uh, it, you can simply uh, check out this position and uh, the engine will tell you that queen to h4 is simply much better for, for black. But in those days, uh, king to d1, uh, knight captures, bishop to g5, it was uh, considered a double-edged position. Uh, or maybe maybe not so much, but it wasn't analyzed because uh, uh, the player playing the black pieces would not go into this. So uh, instead, after f captures on e4, uh, e5 now, stopping e5 by white. Uh, we have knight to f2, we have castles now, bishop to e2, uh, and c5. Uh, Botanic plays d captures on e5. Uh, instead of uh, closing the position with d5, uh, he does have the bishop pair, he doesn't want a uh, close structure in the center. So d captures on e5, d captures on e5, and now castles. Uh, knight to c6, bishop to g5, and here, uh, after some consideration, Tal played queen to e8. He wants to unpin, uh, he doesn't like this pin from the bishop on g5, uh, but it's uh, exactly this position that uh, resulted in the title of this video. Uh, as here, as Tal, Tal explains it, he thought that he was doomed. Uh, but uh, to further increase your uh, uh, pleasure of watching this game, 
I did prepare uh, this part from the book, so uh, here it is. Uh, we can check it out while we show you the moves. Uh, Tal says, in particular, after making the last move, which is queen to e8, uh, I suddenly discovered that white has a forced win by continuing knight to d3. Uh, the c pawn is under attack, as you can see, uh, and the white threatens to spoil the pawn structure uh, on the king side, of course, by playing bishop captures on f6 and following rook captures on f6. Uh, so it seemed to me that the continuation knight captures on e4 uh, does not work uh, in view of rook captures on f8, queen captures on f8, knight captures on e5, knight captures on g5, uh, and that here Botvin had queen captures on h7 and that this was checkmate. And uh, further on Tal says, uh, it was only when I completely panicked and in a frenzy that I was able to realize uh, that in the final position it is a black knight that defends the white queen on h7. Uh, obviously this kind of mate is rarely encountered in chess. So this is something you will uh, not see very often, or maybe even not hear very often, especially for someone uh, you know who, who is trying to win the World Chess Championship to even admit such a thing. Uh, because Tal actually thought that this was the position. If there was a white knight here, then this would indeed be checkmate. Uh, but Tal saw this, and you know that's basically just wasting time, uh, hallucinating over the board. Uh, so after queen to e8, uh, Botvinnik of course played knight to d1. He didn't see any of <laughs> any of these uh, ghosts. Uh, and now queen to g6. Uh, bishop captures on f6, rook captures on f6, and knight to e3. Finally, Botvinnik's uh, remaneuvering of the knight is complete. The knight is now ready to come to d5, uh, and from there it will be a very dangerous piece uh, that can always go to go, go to e7. Uh, so rook captures on f1, rook captures on f1, and now bishop to e6. Bishop to e6 is a better idea than, for example, queen to g5 attacking the e3 knight. Uh, because here, rook to f3 is a very powerful move for Botvinnik, then the rook can come to g3, attack the queen, uh, knight can come to f5, black will be forced to capture the knight, and uh, white, will, white will have a very nice position. So, after rook to f1, uh, bishop to e6, now uh, the rook can also come into the game, it's a very good idea for black. Uh, queen to d3, uh, trying to take advantage of the weak d6 square. Uh, rook to d8, attacking the queen, and now comes knight to d5. And here you can see uh, the idea of knight to e5. Obviously, if Tal plays a silly move, like for example a6, uh, then Botvinnik can immediately win the game with knight to e7 check. Uh, now, you, you, you can capture, of course, then you get queen captures on d8, followed by queen captures on f8, which will be checkmate. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> if you play king to h8, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, now comes queen captures on d8. Knight captures and rook to f8 check. Bishop blocks and rook captures on g8. Uh, again, with a nice checkmate. So, after knight to d5, uh, Tal says that uh, he missed rook to d7, which appears to be uh, a better idea. Uh, then the bishop also would be defending the rook. Uh, he played rook to f8. Uh, now comes knight to c7, attacking the bishop. Rook captures on f1, bishop captures on f1, and now uh, queen to f7. Uh, queen to d6, now with a double attack on the bishop on e6, and here we have bishop to c8. Uh, unfortunately, bishop captures on c4 doesn't work for Tal, uh, because bishop captures and queen captures, and now you get knight to e6. Uh, the threat is queen to f8 checkmate. Uh, so after king to, king to f7, again you get queen to f8 check, king captures, and now queen to g8 checks the king. Uh, king has to move, and then you lose the queen, and the game. So, uh, after king to d6, bishop to c8, Tal goes back, has to defend, uh, and now Botvinnik plays <coughs> knight to a6. And here it becomes obvious that Tal will definitely lose a pawn, uh, as the, both knight and queen are threatening this, the c5 pawn. Uh, if you capture, then you double your pawns, and uh, he can capture your knight here. Uh, and uh, something like queen to e7, uh, Tal mentions this queen to e7 move, and it appears to be... Uh, a nice move because after queen captures, knight captures, and knight captures on c5, um, you do have you you are up a pawn as white, but those are double c pawns, so probably probably uh, black can uh, draw this game, but uh, he doesn't want to risk it. So after knight f uh, knight a6, Tal decides to go uh, for a counter attack. He plays a queen to f4. Uh, we have queen to d5. Uh, and uh, now instead of queen to d5. Uh, you could go for something like knight captures on c5, but knight captures on c5 uh, doesn't work in regards of queen to e3 check. King moves, and now uh, queen to f2, 
and uh, you can't defend both queen captures on f1 and if bishop moves queen to e1 which will result in checkmate your only defense would be queen to d3 uh, to defend the bishop but now simply queen captures on c5 as the knight is undefended uh, so instead botanic plays queen to d5 attacks stalls queen and uh, king and g8 uh, we have king to h8 uh, forcing the king into the corner and now queen to c5 capturing the pawn with the queen now uh, also keeping an eye on this uh, on this nice diagonal so tal can't check uh, check botanic's king uh, and here bishop to e6 uh, you don't want to you don't want to capture a pawn like this queen to f8 would be checkmate uh, so first, Tal plays bishop to e6, now queen captures on e4 definitely is a threat, uh, because bishop can always retreat to g8. Uh, we have knight to c7, uh, and here bishop to g8 immediately. Uh, Tal did consider knight to d4 actually here, uh, with the idea that if c captures on d4, queen to e3 check, king h1 and queen to f2, uh, there's really... You know, there's not a lot of moves white can play, but white can actually play h3 here. And after captures king h2, uh, queen f4, it would be a draw by repetition. Uh, so, uh, the problem with knight to d4 is uh, if Botanic plays knight to d5, then, then Tal is lost. Uh, the problem is the queen uh, simply is has too much influence on the c5 square. Uh, he, she's eyeing the c8 square and also the f8 square. Uh, so you can't capture the knight because you get queen to c8, which will result, uh, which will be terrible uh, after you capture the knight. And uh, you can't move the queen from f4. If you move the queen, uh, then then queen to f8 will be an idea if the queen moves from the f file. Uh, so uh, after you play knight to b3, you attack the queen again. Uh, on c5, then simply queen to b5, uh, and now you're again threatening uh, to capture the knight on b3 and also to capture the queen here. So you will have to move the queen and then you simply lose a piece. So although it seems like uh, a move that forces a draw after this bishop to g8, uh, knight to d4 doesn't really accomplish anything because knight to d5 is, is a beautiful counter by Botvinnik. So queen to f2, uh, we have queen captures on e4 and now knight to e8. Uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty mean idea here, queen to f8 would be an idea by Botvinnik and after Tal retreats with queen to g6 uh, to protect the g7 square, uh, then bishop to d3 would be an idea uh, trying to deflect the queen uh, and then capture of course on g7 and checkmate. Well, it's a uh, idea in progress but uh, it's definitely there so queen to g6 immediately uh, queen to f8 and now e4 e4 seems like uh, seems like an excellent move uh, Tal says that uh, he's not up a pawn but with the double c pawns it's almost as if he is up a pawn so why not push his past pawn also make make room for your knight here on e5 the knight can come from e5 to d3 even block this bishop so that he was very satisfied with this move uh, knight to d6 now. Uh, we have knight to e5 and here uh, c5. Uh, making room for the bishop. Uh, bishop to c4 will definitely be an idea here. Uh, trying to pressure the bishop on g8 or, and force an exchange of knights here. Uh, and here knight to d3 was played. Uh, queen to g5. Uh, queen to g5 was also uh, something uh, Tal considered but, uh, but he quickly gave up on it. So knight to d3 blocking the bishop. Uh, and now knight to f5. Uh, the knight on f5 is doing pretty much the same thing as it was doing on e8, uh, only only much more because uh, g7 uh, still pressuring g7, uh, but from here uh, he's also guarding the d d3 square, so Tal can't really push that uh, past pawn, and it's a much nicer central square. Uh, here knight to e5. Tal also panicked here. Tal uh, again started hallucinating here. Uh, because he actually considered queen to g5 here, and after h4 he considered uh, queen to <laughs> queen to f4, uh, because he thought that okay now he can't play knight to e7 because his queen is undefended on f8, uh, but he totally missed again that queen captures on g7 would result in checkmate in one. So Tal dodged a lot of bullets in this game. It's uh, you know it's a miracle he didn't get checkmated uh, in in at least a few opportunities. Uh, so knight to e5 has to go back to defend. Uh, knight to e7 attacking the queen, and now it's gonna be a bit of a worse end game for for Tal. Uh, queen to f7, queen captures, bishop captures, and now king to f2 immediately uh, starting to improve. Uh, bishop to c4, bishop captures. Uh, we have uh, knight captures, and this is move 38. Instead of capturing here with the bishop, Botvinnik missed uh, 
missed a slight improvement in his position with c6 and now this knight uh, on, on e5 is overloaded uh, guarding the bishop here and also guarding the c6 square uh, but okay you know it's move 38 you have to reach time control can't can't see everything so bishop captures knight captures and now he pushes c6 uh, b captures on c6 knight captures on c6 and a5 uh, this is this is move 40 and uh, now uh, in in this position the, the game was adjourned uh, but it's pretty obvious uh, which move uh, which move botvinnik will uh, play tomorrow uh, of course the move is a4 as the pawn on a3 is under attack and here uh, tal and Coldwens again analyzed this game long, long into the night so uh, after a4 uh, you can play something like king g8 then comes king g3 king f7 king f4 uh, e3 now the pawn is protected by the knight uh, king has to go to f3 uh, but now after king comes to e6 as you do have to improve the position of the black king as well uh, then you can go king to e4 and you can't push the knight because knight d4 for example checks the king and also picks up the e2 pawn uh, so after king d6 now knight d4 protecting and uh, after a couple of moves uh, checks this uh, botvinnik will grab the e3 pawn tal will grab the a4 pawn so now it's a pretty pretty uh, simple position and uh, you know they, they could still play on this position but in the end they agreed to a draw uh, before before the, the game was even uh, continued so yeah uh, that's uh, game uh, game number sixteen. Again, uh, a, ver a very a very feisty battle between the two of them. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And it, again, it's very interesting. Tal Tal imagining ghosts and hallucinating uh, twice, at least twice, that he admits in the book in this game. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Miroslav Hija for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. I will make both of them uh, videos from the Tal Botvinnik series. Uh, if you want, you can check all of the other uh, previous 15 games. The link will be in the description below. Also, if you haven't, uh, I do suggest you check out my coverage of the 1959 Candidates Tournament. It's a tournament Tal had to win uh, to gain this opportunity to even challenge Botvinnik for the title. It's a very enjoyable tournament, so I do, I do recommend it. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, see you soon with game number 17. Thank you all for watching and uh, yeah, uh, have, a, have a great rest uh, of, of the evening.